All right, just going to make a video refuting the Calvinistic twisting of John chapter 6, verse 65 to obviously, again, prove that man has no free will in the context of salvation because Calvinists like to take these little proof texts and cherry-pick verses here and there to prove that essentially you have no free will in the context of salvation and God chooses you for salvation. Now, you, you may have Calvinists that may not say it exactly like that, but when you get down to the core of their doctrine, it's basically God who chooses some for salvation and others for damnation when you really get down to the core of it. So... That simple, but John chapter 6 verse 65 is one of the verses they like taking out of context to prove this uh, false doctrine. So John six sixty five, it says, And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. And this you see, you can't come unto Jesus Christ unless it were given to you by the Father. Okay, we need to notice a few things here. This is why, again, it's important to read the context of what's going on. Because, first of all, no, no sentence, no, no context sentence that's put in context starts off with and okay it's that simple it's a grammatical error so let's see who who is jesus speaking to in this text i'll put it that way well john chapter 6 verse 64 to verse 66 the surrounding two verses but there are some of you that believe not for jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who sh and who should betray him and he said therefore said i unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given it were given unto him of my father from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Who is he speaking to in this passage there? He's speaking to his disciples and apostles. Okay, Jesus Christ was given the apostles by God the Father. Compare this with John chapter 17, verse 8 to 12. God the Father gave Jesus Christ his apostles and disciples. So that's what we have there. John chapter 17, verse 8 to 12. Let's look at the passage there. And this is another thing you won't hear Calvinists do quite a lot. They won't actually cross-reference and compare scripture with scripture. They'll just they'll isolate verses here and there and cherry pick verses here and there to base their their heresies off of. John chapter seventeen verse eight to twelve. For I have given unto them the words which thou givest me, and they have received them and have known surely that I came out I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst sent me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are mine. And all are and all are mine, and mine are the, are nine are mine. Sorry, not good to read on a computer. And I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given hast given me, that they may that they may be one as we are. While I was while I was with them in the world, I kept them in my name. Those that thou give those that thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Okay, he's talking about his apostles. He was given them by the Father, and he's keeping them. Okay, and also compare that John chapter seventeen verse twelve. Because notice at the bottom there that none of them is lost except you know, but the son of perdition that the scripture may be fulfilled. Well, who is this son of perdition? Well, compare this verse twelve with John chapter six verse seventy to seventy one. It says Jesus answered them, Have I not have have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. So, what's going on there? Well, the son of perdition there is Judas Iscariot. He's the one that was lost. Why? Because he was never saved to begin with. Because people like to use that to try to prove you can lose your salvation. Uh, notice how in verse 6, before chapter 17, he says that Judas is a devil. Okay, Jesus knew that Judas was never one of his. And Judas... I happen to believe that Judas was actually not even a human. He was actually just a literal devil in the form of a human. I do happen to believe that. Because uh, why would he say, he, he doesn't say that Judas is, you know, a child of the devil or devil possessed. He literally says, one of you is a devil, referring to Judas. So I do believe that Judas was not actually a, just a devil possessed person, but an actual devil in the form of a human or in human flesh, I'll put it that way. But aside from the point, so John chapter 6 verse 65 is not in any way saying that God chooses certain people for salvation or that man has no free will in, the, in regards to salvation. It's simply referring to his apostles and disciples that were given to Jesus Christ by the Father. See, that's why you have to look at context and compare the verses. This shows that most Calvinist proof texts are isolated and cherry-picked completely out of context. Because that's what every cult does. So, yet another Calvinist proof text refuted by simply cross-referencing a scripture and comparing scripture of scripture and looking at the surrounding two verses that's simple so don't be deceived by calvinism may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with all the brethren goodbye